Hi, this is Pavel, and this is part six of the Star Trek battle. And in this battle, uh, battle in this uh, exercise, or in this part, we, will, we are going to create the game loop, basically. We are going to create the battle itself. We have all the classes, we have all the methods in place. Now let's put it all together. So let's go to our program, and let's start it. So first thing, if you remember, uh, from the assignment it says that each ship starts with the shield strength of 15 so let's do that so uh, and that actually can be a constant because we we are going to simply pass this into our constructor so we are not going to be changing it uh, in our main method all this uh, the shield is being decremented, if you remember, uh, in the one of the methods called hit. And I believe it was in spaceship. Yeah, that's we were passing the, the shield into the constructor and then the shield is being decremented. But over here we can start it as a, as a constant. Uh, so that's our shield. And in our main method, uh, first thing, uh, array of ships so we are going to create a, an array of all the ships we're supposed to have three ships uh, I mean three ships per team so let's say I will create uh, two galaxy ships and one defined uh, ship for the uh, Federation and two battle cruisers and one bird of prey for the Klingon so um, it's gonna be spaceship this is the thing uh, about uh, inheritance and all uh, see, this is an abstract class uh, and the super class for all the other classes I can create an array of spaceship and it will fit all these concrete classes galaxy battle cruiser defiant bird of prey all of them because uh, they are inheriting directly or through their own uh, uh, super classes or base classes they all inherit from the spaceship so I don't have to worry, I don't have to declare a galaxy class, or like a create new galaxy class, create a new battle cruise. I mean, we will have to do that, but not in an array. The array can be more abstract, more generic, and the spaceship is the abstract class that we are going to use for this. So we create an array of uh, spaceships, I'll just call it ships, a new spaceship. And they want us to put six of them there because three of each team, so we will have six elements. And we also need uh, we need to uh, define a loop, the game loop, until you know the game is over. So I'm just gonna create a boolean called game over and set it to false because at the beginning the game is not over, obviously. So let's cre uh, create the actual uh, actual ships. So now I will simply load them, so ships of the zero element equals new, and I'm gonna create, let's create the uh, Klingon first, so I'm gonna create one bird of prey, and uh, I'm gonna call it uh, based on what the, uh, if, what the original program that the teacher provided was you know these are the names of the ships enterprise uh, i cannot even read this k hacked excalibur toh called defiant warnock i don't spin klingon i know some people actually do but not me all i want is to just program this battle that's all so um i have the names over on my paper because I cannot possibly rem remember them so I'm just gonna copy paste them from there not a paper from my notepad so the name is Warnag and remember it also it passes the name to a constructor of its base class and also shield so that's our shield that's why I wanted it as a constant Other, otherwise you know we would have to type 15 here and 15 for the next ship and 15 for the what if we had like we decide to increase this to 60 I don't have to type it 60 times or change it 60 times. So that's why constant is better in this case. So that's one ships uh, one equals new and we will create a battle cruiser. And I 
I'm gonna create a name. I'll just copy paste it again. And pass in shield. And I'm going, to, by the way, I'm creating one team in a row, like zero, one, and two will be uh, the Klingons. The reason is because that we, like, if we need to def uh, kind of figure out what ship shot uh, is shooting because it's gonna shoot on the other half of the array because that's where the enemies are. So zero, one, two will be one team and three, four, five will be the other team. So we will know that if uh, the ship zero uh, shoots, it's not going to shoot at the, at the element of the ship one and ship two because those are the same team. It will shoot at the other half of the array. That's why I have them created uh, this way uh, or in order rather than just like scatter them around. So the second or the third one, then the last one, again, it's gonna be the battle cruiser. So one battle of ship, two battle cruisers, and the name I'll paste. And that's gonna be oh called whatever shield. Okay, now let's do the uh, federation, and it's gonna be new. And I'm gonna create the def defined class. Of, and now remember from the previous videos, the uh, federation takes a registry. That's the like the kind of like a serial number I guess so I have that based again from the program that the teacher supplied I'm just gonna copy paste it that's the because it passes it to our base class so that's the registry now the name and the name is uh, defined and we are passing the shield again which is 15 for all the ships so ship uh, 4 this one will be the galaxy class and here's the here's the number and so this one will be enterprise that's gonna be the name of the ship and again lastly shield and finally our last ship uh, that's gonna be again the galaxy class and I will buy, paste the uh, registry and this one will be called based X Excalibur and shield all right so that's our uh, sh uh, ships and now when everything's ready we can do something like console that uh, right line let the battle begin yeah so how do we begin? Well, we're gonna loop again until the game is over. So while the game is not over, so while not game over, let's play. And if the game is over, and uh, we'll just pause the screen because everything will be displayed already on the screen. So over here we will just do console.read key. All right, so what, what is gonna be in our loop? Uh, well, at first thing we need to do, we need to select a ship to fire that that fires, and it's randomly again. So random dot ran, not random dot ran, but let's say the variable name would be the rand. I always name it that way. Uh, and um, we need to define what ship is being uh, is firing and which one is being hit. So select ship that fires and ship that gets hit. This is all random, so uh, it's gonna be a spaceship. I'll call it firing ship and a spaceship, a ship that is hit, so hit ship, I guess. And uh, now let's randomly select the, the, you know, the index of the array. And it's going to be the ship that fires. So uh, our ship 
index equals random number from 0 to 5. So we have to put 6 in there because it's 6 exclusive. In other words, not included. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, and 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, of course. So it's a random index. That's the ship that's firing. Except, I, why did I name it ship index? Ship index. It's the firing ship equals a random. Oh, jeez. Okay. It's the ships from the array of the index random. Zero. So I, I wanted to maybe, I should, should have done that ship index. It would be easier to follow probably. In fact, thinking of this, this is not going to do well. Even though this is random, this will be very repetitive. It, it won't really feel random at all. In order to make it random, we have to kind of like slow down the program basically. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a loop uh, of i equals 0. i is less than, uh, I don't know, 150,000. And i plus plus. And what we are going to do over here is the... Um, Basically, again, if we if we don't loop and if we just create this, uh, then um, it will create it. The, pro the the program proceeds so fast that, and uh, the seeding for the random number is based on the internal clock, so the clock won't even have really time to change. It will be like always the same number for a while before it actually uh, changes. So that's why I'm kind of slowing it down with this kind of arbitrary loop. So that's our uh, uh, it will select the ship and the random index of from the array. But you know what? I'm going to do it uh, with the I will create I will create an integer ship index, and this will be the ship or the index of the, of the array for the ship that is shooting so uh, kind of like used to identify identify um which ship is firing whether uss or kes is firing because again we remember we have them in order so if uh, the index is 0 1 and 2 then we are shooting at 3 4 and 5 and vice versa so our ship index will equal to, and I will just copy paste this. And and remember, this is within the loop. This is within the for loop. So basically, it will it will create it will this random number of 150,000 times, and the last one is the one that we will use again. This is just to slow down the. Uh, generation of the random numbers so now our firing ship now equals the whatever the value of the ship index is being held uh, at the end of this loop okay so now we have a ship that fires and now we can uh, we have to decide what it fires on so we have to decide if the index is less than three again one two and one on zero and two and we are shooting at 3, 4, and 5. So if our ship index is less than 3, so if the Klingon fleet is firing, then hit ship. And this one we can just do randomly again because it's already after the loop, so the loop already slowed down everything for us. So our ships, and I will just do random the next. And we are shooting at the other half of the array, which is from the three included and to six excluded. So it's three, four, and five index. Otherwise, it means that it's the uh, federation that's shooting. So the, the hit ships, hit ship will be ships, 
and the index will be of the random dot next and it's gonna be zero to three we are shooting at the first half of the array that's where the klingon ships are okay so we have that and um now we can uh, fin uh, kind of figure out you know what damage was done whether the ship was destroyed and displayed but i'll do that in the next video so stick around and i'll see you uh, in the next video take care